What's up guys, here are five players I'm trying to buy going into week two of fantasy football. Why don't we talk talk about Tank Dell real quick because he's somebody that I was looking at and saying like, hey, I think, like I can totally see how someone can be discouraged off of Tank Dell after week one. Nico Collins led in target share and production. Stefan Diggs got all the fantasy points and Tank Dell only played on 65% of snaps. Well, I'm here to tell you, not only should you be, not only should you not be discouraged, you should be encouraged. 65% of snaps, sure, but he was just taken off the field on one place 87% route participation for Dell right so that's close to a full-time route participation right there so the snap share doesn't really doesn't even matter that definitely doesn't tell the whole story his 23% target share does that was second behind Nico his 44% air yard share was second behind Nico Collins 50% right Stefan Diggs only had 4% of the air yards in week one but he got the red zone targets which is very important also and Stefan Diggs ended up getting the fantasy points but I think Tank will have his weeks and if anyone in your league is feeling discouraged by that and you have have some sort of inkling that they do i'd be happy to take tank off their hands maybe we you know add a little bit to tank dell and then shoot for Devonte smith and if not if that doesn't work out right shoot for tank dell right i always want to aim as high as possible <laughs> you know obviously because you know and Devonte smith is somebody who is aiming high and by the way like we talked about it all offseason with Devonte smith right we were hoping he moves into the slot we we're hoping he moves into the slot and there you have it 71 percent of his routes from the slot on friday night 30 percent target share right we talked about his role on Kellen Moore's offense, this particular role in Kellen Moore's offense out of the slot, and it being a, a target funnel. Obviously, you have AJ Brown on the outside, so, you know, there's limitations there, obviously, but now he won't have to face press coverage at all. He'll find himself going up against safeties and linebackers a ton, right? You don't really have to worry about top corners because they're usually not playing inside. I think he's going to be a lot more consistent this year. Uh, he's going to have the occasional blow-up game, obviously, as well. He didn't blow up in this game. He had a great game, but he didn't blow up. He's going up against D. Alford this week. He's undrafted nickel corner. He was Nick, he was the Falcons nickel corner last year until he got benched at the end of the year the Falcons allowed the 12th most fantasy points to slot receivers while he was their slot their nickel corner and it got worse as the year went on and before he got benched the Falcons allowed the eighth most fantasy points to slot wide receivers and he's who Devontae will most likely you know see most of in this game maybe they move Mike Hughes inside for this matchup Mike Hughes is the guy who took Alfred's job last year you know as the nickel corner but Hughes you know played primarily on the outside last week so either way Way, I think Smith is someone I'm buying if I need that solid, consistent wide receiver two of production all year long. All right, so I, I, I got another buy for you guys if you're looking for a running back. Okay, I think the Bengals' backfield was probably the most ambiguous of any backfield in the NFL coming into week one, right? No one really had any idea how this was going to play out. Everyone had their assumptions, but that's all it was. Uh, but week one gave us a clear picture, and the clear picture is that Zach Moss is the guy. And I think if you're looking for a solid RB2 who didn't blow up in week one, who you can still get relatively cheap I think he would be my main target he played on 65% of snaps he was the guy in every situation he got the lone goal line snap 71% of the rest of the short yardage snaps and here's the key so many people were assuming Chase Brown was going to be the passing down back not even close according to Fantasy Life's utilization report Moss was on the field for 100% of the two minute snaps and 89% of third downs so Moss is the primary early down back and the passing down back which means he has a great role this is a solid RB2 role with high end RB2 upside if the Bengals can get it together and I'm, I'm assuming they will by the way not only was this a great role Zach Moss played very well and just to note he was fifth in rushing yards over expectation per attempt last year that's among all running backs and it looks like a lot of that is carrying over into this year out of the 36 qualifying running backs in week one 10th in missed tackles force per attempt 13th in yards after contact per attempt fourth in success rate fifth in yards per carry second to last in stuff rate he, he did have only nine carries in this game compared to Brown's three carries they only had the ball for 26 minutes which was seventh lowest this past week and they were down in this game but I think once the Bengals offense turns it around I think Moss's raw opportunity will go up and he's going to be viewed as an every week RB2. All right guys just want to say this episode is brought to you by New Era. What's up, fantasy football fanatics? There is a new era at Upper Hand Fantasy. Gear up for kickoff with the official cap of NFL sidelines from New Era Cap. This weekend's matchups are packed with fantasy implications, and no matter which stars or teams you're backing, New Era has the gear you'll need to get you in the game. From classic fitted caps to iconic snapbacks, New Era's premium designs and comfort let you showcase your team pride in style. Elevate your game day look now with the official cap of NFL sidelines from New Era Cap. 
crap. I have a wide receiver and a tight end that I want to talk about real quick. Number one is Keenan Allen, right? Keenan Allen had a terrible fantasy day in week one and Chicago's offense looked bad with some rookie quarterback, you know, growing pains, right? But on top of the 33% target share, he did leave the field for a little bit and he ended up being targeted on more than 40% of his routes run. And overall, his target share could have been way more if he didn't leave the field. But Romo Dunze could be out for a couple of weeks with a knee sprain now. I think Keenan can be bought relatively low. He wasn't drafted high. He didn't put up fantasy points in week one, but his usage was really good. Um, and some people might be, you know, discouraged with the way Caleb looked and totally understandable. I mean, he did miss him on that left sideline. That could have been a touchdown. Keenan also dropped a red zone touchdown later as well. So he could have had a much bigger week. Overall, though, you just got to hope that Caleb Williams can improve and Keenan can easily outperform his ADP. I think that's kind of what's going to happen, especially over the next couple of weeks if Roman Dunes is out. All right, so here's my tight end. If you're looking for a tight end, he was taken in drafts at a spot where some might have already had a tight end, but they grabbed him as the best player available, and that's Brock Bowers right? And in these scenarios, I'd definitely be looking to see what it takes to acquire him because he had some of the best utilization of any tight end in week one as a rookie in his first real action, right? 78% rap participation. That's what you want to see. Even with Michael Mayer there, I think he only had a 40% rap participation in this game. 23% target share that led the team. And that was third among all tight ends in week one. 27% air yard share, third among all tight ends in week one. 11.8 fantasy points, third among all tight ends in week one. Six catches for 58 yards in his first week as a tight end like that's pretty good right very encouraging for the start of his career um so he's already a low-end tight end one in week one as a rookie and he has the ability i think to go even higher as the season moves along like if you need a tight end he's someone who might be you know a second tight end on a roster again that already has one so in those scenarios i'll be looking out for that um and i'll be looking to send some some offers to acquire him